everyone welcome back to studio lou it's cindy so i'm here today with episode number eight of our flea market style travelers notebook series this is sort of a day-to-day -day recipe how to make um, one of these travelers notebooks i start with the cover and we go um, each day i post a new episode um, i do another page so we do the recipe kind of for that page on that day and then we'll put the whole journal together at the end um, i don't post these every single day they're kind of interspersed between other videos i'm doing um, um, but here we are with the sixth page layout. So this is the journal that I've been doing as the prototype. So let's go inside, take a quick look at where we are. And here is our new page spread. So I'll just show it to you as is for now. <clears throat> okay, so now let's take it out and we'll focus on making it for the journal that I'm making with you and the materials that we're going to use. So first of all, let's start with a piece of ledger paper for the length. Now, this ledger paper is actually some ledger paper that I was di avocado dyeing and I forgot to add baking soda initially to a few of the pages. So we had a little bit of sticking. So there's a little bit of a tear on the edge, but it's not going to matter <laughs> for what we're doing. So as you can see, this is kind of like a Z fold. Um, so if I hold these together, the full piece of ledger, what you're going to do is first make a fold um, that is the width of your journal. And let me grab the journal that we're going to work in. This is the one I'm making with you. Um, and so we need to make sure that the width of the page where we fold it is not as large as what this journal cover is. So on this, I'm lining up the numbers and I probably can do my fold to about this number 30. So let me take that off and I will just kind of roughly fold. Now put the patterned side of the ledger on the inside for this, okay? <clears throat> so let's just get our paper folded here. And then once you've done that fold, just turn it back and you're going to fold the other edge in. Then I recommend just trimming your paper to whatever length that you like. What this is going to be is just a little flip out, okay, for a little extra writing space on both sides. So what I'm going to do with this paper, because I lost a little bit of the end, the edge here, I'm going to cut it to about right here. I'm not going to go all the way on the inside, I don't really mind that, but I'm just gonna get rid of this bit on the end and throw it away. <clears throat> so this is your base paper for what we need to do today. Now let me walk you through the page. So the front of the page, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a fabric ruffle down the side edge here. Then on the inside where the markings are, we're going to keep it simple. The only page we're working on is this one. And we're going to need for this project a little piece of tin foil or chocolate wrapper, something shiny. Um, you could use like metal tape, just something to give it a little bit of shininess. You're going to need a word snippet just anything that you like. I tend to cut a lot of words out of old books and, and you know use them in different ways. And you'll need some kind of a stamp just to add a stamping element. Okay. And then the back, this is where the majority of the work is today, but honestly, I kept today a little simple, so it's not going to be too hard. So on the flap, I want some kind of a decorative trim. Now, I wish I had more of this. This was from like a vintage package from some kind of a 1950s box of something I got at an estate auction. I don't remember, but what I also recommend you can use here are the cutoff strips of scrapbook paper, or sometimes scrapbook pads come with those pages that have different kinds of ephemera, including some of them that have like long strips. Um, you could do something like that. Um, really just any kind of an interesting sort of strip that you could use as a trim. You could also use lace or something if you wanted to. Um, so then we fold it out. <coughs> 
And what I've done here is I've made an upper tuck pocket and what I made it out for this one, I, I have a book about like all these different how to's, like how to, all these weird things. So this is like how to protect your cutlery. So I recommend some kind of a manual if you have it, like, um, you know, maybe you have all of those old manuals to like your appliances and all of that kind of thing. You could do that. You could use a technical drawing. If you have books on things like DIY where they have, you know, those fun um, instructions along with diagrams or even a newspaper article clipping um, if you have vintage newspapers or even you know one from your your local like your, your current newspaper you know, there's always some fun things to use right so just something you find interesting to make this corner pocket and inside the pocket a couple things are happening I want something that is going to be a glue down that will surprise you here. So I've chosen for this one, this vintage illustration of a fish. It's from a book of illustrations of fish from like the 1800s that I got. So that's under there. And then we're making a tag to go inside. So I made this tag. Um, I recommend some kind of packaging paper, something you've recycled if possible. Um, and I just kind of left the edge natural. This was like the top of the bag. Then I took some old book page from an old children's book, like a Black Beauty from the 1940s, I think, and I just pasted it down here with a bit of a matching kind of deckel edge, um, torn edge. And then I took a couple of pages out of a black and white old field guide and I added them here to give focal points and then just some simple lace on the bottom. So that's the recipe for today's page. So let's get started. So first thing is I'm going with things that will go with this journal. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start on the first page here. And I did choose a piece of fabric that I think kind of goes with the cover because it's got some pink in it. So what I'm going to do now is just go to the sewing machine. I can't do that on camera because my sewing machine is just a little bit too far away. But I've got this, um, it's a little bit longer. It does have a seam in the middle. It's actually from a vintage dress. Um, and I'm going to just kind of stitch, ruffle, stitch, ruffle. You just kind of push your fabric up a little bit. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can also use a fabric glue to affix it here. Um, you you could also hand sew a ruffle. It's not hard to do that. You just kind of, you know, press your fabric under, you'd add a stitch, press your fabric under, you know, like you can do that kind of thing. The other thing that you can do um, is, I don't know if you're familiar with creating um, the it's often in like the waistband of a skirt if you want it to be pleated you can actually whip stitch through your fabric like this you know all the way down then when you get to the bottom you tie a knot up here first and then whip stitch through it then you push it up and and you push you can push your fabric up until it's as wrinkly as you want it to be then you can tie off your knot and you can then go back up and you can, you know, secure your fabric. So all of that being said, you can definitely look for how to hand sew a ruffle on YouTube. I'm sure there's a million videos, but let me go stitch this and I will be right back and we'll get on to the next step. Okay, I have done my stitching. Now I will just come back in here and I will snip any loose threads from the stitching. Okay, so the way that I stitch onto paper um, is that I, I do a couple of back stitches at the top. I know some people I've heard say like that you shouldn't, you can't do a back stitch because you know, it'll tear up your paper. Um, I don't find that at all. I don't have that problem. I see some people taking like, um, you know, they'll pull the stitch through, back through the hole, and they'll tie it in these knots. I don't find that necessary. Like, I don't get tearing. I have no tearing from backstitching because what happens is your needle with the thread, if your sewing machine is properly serviced, it should go through exactly the same hole. It should just go backwards on the exact same track. So, I don't know, maybe different sewing machines act differently, and or maybe someone's just had a bad experience with it, and they just don't want to do that 
again. I totally get it. So um, either way works though. So just to kind of go over what I was saying, if you don't want to backstitch, um, but you want to make sure that your thread is secure, you can either just do a daub of glue um, where the where you start and end your stitches, or you can actually go from the back side here. Before I clipped it, there were long threads, and you can pull that back use like a like a seam ripper to pull that stitch the, the string on the back through the front so that these two would be together and then you can tie them in a couple little knots and that will secure that so um <clears throat> okay so now we open it up this page we leave alone okay so now we're going to get I'm going to use tin foil, just like I did for this one. So I, this is just a scrap piece of clean tin foil that I, I buy tin foil specifically for my, my project here. Um, and it's, a, it's aluminum foil, not tin. Um, so I'll just pull a little piece off here. You could also use chocolate from um, like a gold foiled chocolate box or something. So now I'm just going to flatten it out a little here, flip it over onto the duller side is where I put the glue. Um, and you'll notice that when you add your glue, if you're using glue stick, it kind of mashes down the foil a little bit so it makes it nice and smooth to glue it down. So then just freeform here, just glue this down where you like it. And just kind of give it a good press everywhere and make sure it's all stuck down. I find this is really easy to glue down with glue stick. I don't struggle with it at all. Um, I do struggle with gluing my arm to my glue book sometimes, like right now, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to choose one of these stamps of these moths. Um, I think I will go with this one. So it doesn't have to be a moth, it can be whatever you like. I'm just choosing a moth because I did so with the other journal and I like how it looks. Okay, and then I'm just going to stamp up here right above. I'm not going to take the time to get my stamping block out. I don't really need to, I don't think. That came out just fine. Now, I will put this stamp back. Okay, um, so now we need a word snippet for here. So let me grab some. I'll just grab a handful out of my box of words over here. I have a bunch. Um, so we have a once upon a time, which is always a nice thing to use. I may use that for this one. I think that's always a fun one. A lot of mine are nature related. There's how wonderful. A smell of fire, a cool place by a small stream, sit and sing a by a spring. Rediscovering exotic shoehorns. That's kind of fun. I like that that I'm going to use that one because it's just so random like it's, it's it's this is the perfect journal for that but I also have this old piece of cellophane tape okay anyways now the one thing about this particular word snippet <clears throat> is that it's very little um, I, I, these days I don't grab so many of the little ones but why is that a problem for me because I feel like it will get lost on the tin on the tin itself so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of art glitter glue and attach it to just some brown this is just handmade paper um, <clears throat> from my scraps just going to fix up my glue bottle here because I have not used it yet today okay <clears throat> and then I will just add a little glue here And then just glue this down. And then we will just snip that out here. It's going to leave a little bit of an outline so that that doesn't get completely lost. Okay. And then you can ink over your words a little bit if you want to. I'm not going to for this one. I think it looks nice and white. <clears throat> okay, so our, in our inside spread is complete. Now we're on to this back section. 
so what I have for this journal for the trim is one of those strips from like a scrapbook um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure against here how long I need it to be so right there and then I'll just glue it down and it just gives kind of a nice something for the eye to look at and it just being a plain flap right and also will kind of direct you to the fact that it is a flap that you can pull out I'm going in a little bit deeper than I did on the other one just because I have this sort of torn edge on this piece of paper okay so there is our flap okay now I need to do this stuff so first we need to make a pocket <clears throat> so I'm decided to make um, I wanted some kind of interesting eclectic paper to make the pocket out of so I have this book in my stash called simple living an illustrated workbook for the new farm and home by Jacques Messa Messacrier so it's a cool book it's got really nice like text in it and it's all different kinds of DIYs and like it's honestly like a very cool like hippie living kind of book <laughs> so this particular page is about different kinds of masonry type stuff and, and buildings so I'm going to take the claw hammer <clears throat> part of this and I think I'll take this piece too so as you can see this is like kind of you know a DIY book kind of piece And then I will just um, trim the edge off here and then I just want to stiffen this up a little bit more with another piece of paper so I have um, this really large book page piece here that's a little bit thicker so I'm going to just glue stick down onto here okay. then you I don't know if you can see here but this one I've stitched around the edge I want to do the same thing with this one so I'm just going to add some single stitches around the edge I will be right back so that we can move on to the tag all right I've stitched around this and I totally forgot to reset my machine from the zigzag stitch but I just went with it so zigzag it is so now I'm just going to clip around and remove the excess paper okay now we want to glue this um, on the back on the upper and inside corners um, sides rather so you're going to do the top and then the inside edge I'm going to use our glitter glue I'm just I usually go right over my stitches just because it's just an extra securing measure not that they're going to come out but why not they're also a good guide for where to keep your glue and then when I press glue down I always kind of press the edge down so I push the glue inside then my glue isn't going to seep out so I try to push you know downward and then this way um, rather than just flat otherwise you're going to get a little bit of glue seepage if you have too much glue okay so there's our pocket Another thing you could do for aesthetics if you wanted is you could round this inner corner. Um, totally up to you. So now we need to make the, t the, the tag and the glue down. So um, as I showed you, I did put a fish back here. It doesn't have to be a fish though. You could put whatever you wanted peeking out back there. You know, you can cut a lot of fun things out of children's books and um, yeah. But I'm going to use this fish because he was on the same page as the other fish 
So I'm just going to go ahead and cut him out. And you'll see that his tail is missing, which is okay because I don't need that. It's going to be hidden under the pocket. He's a peekaboo fish. <clears throat> in there and get his little lips cut out okay so now I'm going to glue him in with art glitter glue just because there's a few little fine areas here that I want to make sure they get glued down well okay so just lift up your pocket Make sure that, you know, his cutoff end and his edge are stuck inside there. And then just glue, glue, press them down, go into your pocket and just make sure all your glue is down. <clears throat> so there he is, so cute. Now we need the tag. So this is a piece of packaging paper from a paper bag, which is what I used with this one as well. So what I'm going to do is get a general idea of the size of, well, actually, I don't need to do that. I've already cut out my, my piece of book page. So this is old book page, just the same as that one. So I'm going to use that as my guide here. <clears throat> I'm just going to glue it down. Oops, I think I probably need a new glue stick. Yep, I'll use this last little bit though for this project. Okay. And I'm leaving the torn edge, which you hopefully can see here, the torn edge on the edge of the book page. It's kind of part of the design concept. Um, then just glue that onto your packaging paper. Okay. Just get my glue pin out of the way. Then what you're going to do is use the bottom that torn edge to create your your decal kind of edge that goes with the tearing and then just leave a little bit of edging from the packaging paper around the edge of your book page okay and then just give it a nice smooth Flatten it, get all that glue happily adhered. <clears throat> now we're going to use some birds. So I have some more birds from the same book here. Um, and in this one, I chose to leave their names with them and I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to freeform tear around just to get rid of the hard edges. Okay, so now we have two birds, one and two. I might need to just trim this one a little. Yeah, I'll take a little bit of that branch off there because <clears throat> you want them to fit on the tag. Okay, so now I'm going to use glue stick, my little, my little nub of glue here. <laughs> just use this last little bit up. Um, the red-eyed vireo and the warbling vireo. Okay. Perfect. Now, what I need to do is choose some kind of lace for the bottom here. And then I'll get my Fabri-Tac. Um, Let's see what I have here. Oh, actually, I've got more of that same. I'll try to use this up. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. Please try a little later. Apparently, um, the Amazon device is talking to me for no reason. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just measure across the width of the tag. 
and I'll put this back in my little lace scraplets. Then I just take some, oops, I gotta take my pin out of my glue. You just take some Fabri-Tac or three-in-one or fabric glue and go across the bottom <clears throat> and add our lace. This could also be fabric. It could be a paper ruffle whatever you have. This is about using up the stuff that we all have in our studios. Use some yarn. A strip of torn fabric would look really nice, I think. Okay, so then put this one back in its pocket. And guess what? We are already done. I just have to give this another moment to just dry. This might need a little more time. There we go. Okay. So now we just stick it in our pocket, making sure, let's just make sure that nothing in here is stuck. Sometimes you can get a little bit of excess glue, <clears throat> and I think I've shown you this before. The best way to do it is just like with a ruler, just slide your ruler underneath. Um, and I should be using a plastic. You want to use a plastic ruler to do this. If you ever get any excess glue kind of stuck, just slide a ruler. And, and it'll get rid of it. Okay, so now let's plunk our tag in there, make sure it's all dry, it is. So, pop it inside. And there we go. So now we have two finished. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the new one inside the journal. I'll just kind of go through the pages to show you again what we've done so far. Done some pretty fun stuff, I think. Okay, so now here we are, and that goes right there, and I like how the pink is looking with the blue in this book, and then over here, how this spread looks with this page, I like it a lot. So there we go. We're getting a little a little chubbier, but not at a control fat. See, we're, we're not super fat and chunky, we're just right, I think. So that is my spread for today. Um, you can find my videos every day or two, um, every now and then, maybe a little longer, but probably not. I'm trying to do this every couple of days or, or shorter. Um, and you can see in the description box below, I have posted the playlist for this series. So you can go all the way back to the first video where we make the cover. Um, and then, yeah, feel free to leave me some comments. If you have questions about anything I'm doing, I'm happy to answer them. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. We're so close to a thousand subscribers. We're so close. So anyways, have a really wonderful day and thank you for spending some time with me. Bye for now.